Dear students, I will teach you contract costing through a story using a practical scenario. How contracts are made? Why did we adapt contract costing? Why did we deviate from normal accounting procedures? How do we recognize profits? And what terms are used in contract costing? This chapter is applicable for the companies which are there in the construction business. Government projects such as flyovers, bridges, dams and road construction are done by the government and given to various contractors. Assume that a flyover bridge is to be built in one location in Hyderabad and that the bridge would stretch over 30 kilometers. The flyover is 30 kilometers long. As a result, the government wants the job to be completed. So, first they make a tender form and they will include all technical details in the bidding form and the government will issue a public notice in the newspaper stating that we want this work accomplished. We are looking quotations from potential contractors who have completed similar work in the past. They should submit their tender form. Tender forms can be obtained from our office. Those construction companies that see the government advertisements in various newspapers, they will first pay the nominal fees and then get the tender form from the government office. All technical details are listed in the tender form and then we construction companies must meet with a team of engineers to show them the project details, what kind of work it is and the engineer will start preparing estimates to complete the work including how much it will cost, how much it will cost in labor and how much it will cost in overheads. They totaled all of the anticipated costs. According to Raghuvaran and his staff, the project will cost 1000 crores to complete and he has set a profit margin of 200 crores. He wants to quote a contract price of 1200 crores. Raghuvaran filled out the bidding form with information about his company and his experience and he quoted a contract price of 1200 crores. We are willing to execute this work for 1200 crores and have submitted the tender form in a sealed envelope. Assume as Raghuvaran does, the other 10 companies have likewise quoted and submitted the tender form. As a result, the government office receives the sealed envelopes. Nobody knows whether A company knows what B has filed or what C has submitted because everything is in sealed envelopes. The government has now announced the date, time and location for the opening of these forms have been notified by the government. Among all the bidders, Raghuvaran Construction Limited's quote was accepted by the government and it was announced that this project will be completed by Raghuvaran Construction Limited. Among all the bidders, he quoted a list price and high quality construction and the project must be completed within three years. If not, penalty will be levied. Project takes three years to complete. Books of accounts are prepared by Raghuvaran Construction Limited. Every year, contract account is prepared to assess the performance of that particular contract. PNL account, what we'll do now? Debit all expenses. By the end of the first year, 10.5 kilometers construction was completed. Raghuvaran had spent 200 crores on materials, 50 crores on labor, and 100 crores on overheads. Is there any sales in the first year? The answer is no. The contract get over in the third year. Till then, it was a double IP. In accountancy, when you recognize the sales after the goods are sold. Dear students, flyover completed or flyover is yet to complete. Flyover is yet to complete. India is to says double IP should be valued at cost. Therefore, closing double IP valued at cost. Did Raghuvaran end any profit in the first year, debit cost of 350 crores and credit back cost of 350 crores first year, profit reported is zero. Year 1, flyover construction is not completed. Ownership lies with whom, Nana? With Raghuvaran Construction Limited. Year 2, by the end of the second year, 12.5 kilometers construction was completed. First item to opening WIP. 350 crores. Last year closing will become 
current year opening. This year spent on raw material, labor over its 400 crores. Debit cost of 750 crores and credit back cost of 750 crores. Second year profit reported zero. Year two flyover construction is completed or yet to be completed. Yet to be completed. The contracts get over in the third year. Till then it is a double IP. Year three flyover construction is completed and we can recognize the sales the answer is yes to opening 750 third year expenses 250 crores and credit contract price 1200 crores raghuvaran spent 1000 crores and got 1200 crores what is the profit 200 crores now the question is whether this profit belongs to year one or year two or year three if you were in Raghuvaran's place, what would you say? Is it normal or abnormal way of recognizing profits after entire work is done? Generally, it will take lot of time to complete the project, but still you report on yearly basis. If you follow normal accounting as per India's 115 or AS9, revenue is recognized when ownership gets transferred to other person. In your case, when you transfer goods to other person last year, recognizing profit, it leads abnormal way of recognizing the profit. It is something uneven. First year, no profit. Second year, no profit. Third year, super profits. It is made disadvantage if you follow normal accounting principles for long term contracts. For this, special principle have been adapted almost in days 11 or AS7. But not exactly 1200 crores you would like to spread total profits over the lifetime of the contract. As and when the work is done to that proportionate, we have to recognize the profit. Year 1 profit when you credit side is more than the debit side. We have to forget normal accounting AS2 and AS9. Wherever AS7 applies, AS2 and AS9 cease to be applied. Profit of the contract should spread over the life of the project. Why? Special method of accounting adapted for construction companies. Because of the nature of this industry, it takes a long time for them to execute a single project. As a result, if a project takes three years to finish, the first two years will be spent on closing WIP with no profit. The full revenue will be recognized in the last year and hence the complete profit will be recorded in the last year. This will not be fair to such business because they will not make a profit in any year except the last year. We would like to spread this profit over the entire contract. Before moving on, we learn the terms used in this chapter and then we continue our story. First one, contractor, the construction company which takes the contract. Now our story, Raghuvaran Constructions Limited. Second one, contractee, that person who gives the contract to the contractor. In our story, government. In this chapter, we will prepare books of accounts of the contractor. Contract price equal to selling price. Contract price is something similar as sale price. But in case of contract, we don't call it as sales. Like when you have paid the fees at an academy, you don't say it as a sales price. We call it as fees, basically revenue for the academy. So contract price is also revenue per contractor which contractee will pay. Contractee should pay contract price to the contractor. As and when the contract partially completed, recognize the proportionate sales. When the first year is over, it's time to figure out how much revenue you will make. Will I recognize entire 1200 crores? The answer is no. It depends on to the extent of work done. How does the customer or client know how much work has been completed? There is always a trust issue between the contractor and the contractee. The problem is that the contractor claims that a certain percentage of the work has been completed. But the contractee refuses to accept the contractor's statement. We need a superman to solve the problem. He is called civil engineer or architect. We have to approach a civil engineer who will give us a certificate that this much work is completed. This is not just for accounting purposes. It is also essential. As a result, the client will pay 
based on the certificate. I need to get 200 crores from the client. I would not get it the same day I signed the contract and I would not get it after 3 years. I can't afford to wait 3 years for those payments. This 200 crores are also released on a proportionate basis as and when the work is completed and the client requires an assurance which I obtain in the form of a certificate from a civil engineer. The moment that I get a certificate, proportion of work done, I can recognize that as a revenue. I will say that by name, work certified. Work certified means that portion of work done which is certified by architect or engineer. Let's say architect certified 20% of work is completed. Now the question is 20% of what? 1200 crores or 350 crores? The answer 20% of contract price. It is always valued on the basis of contract price. Sometimes work may have been completed but the architect may be unable to certify it because it has not progressed to the next level or because calculating percentages is complicated it is termed as work uncertified work has been completed but has not been certified something like goods produced and not sold we call it as a closing stock like that i spent cost on it but not certified is called work uncertified dear students i hope you enjoy concept of contract costing in next session we will learn about whether we will get the whole amount from the contractee as certified by the architect and how much profit should be transferred to the pnl thank you for watching please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing